I, yeah, I mean, I'm all for technological advances. I'm not going to say I wouldn't, but of course I've watched some sci-fi things where someone hacked into it and took over to kill people. <laughs> See, I'm an Indian. I'm a proud Indian and I would never want to get into a self-driving car in India. I would be the first person to sign up for a self-driving car. I love the idea. If I could sit in the back and watch Netflix and the car drives itself, of course I'm going to get in it. Yeah, I think they're really interesting. And, and I think it's the future in terms of safety. And we'll realize too that driving is actually really inconvenient, but it takes up so much of our lives. And That's a tough one. I'm generally pretty open to new technology, so I could definitely see myself getting in one. I think though that I wouldn't ever become like a whole convert. I'm not going to be a sort of oh, that's anti-technology. I'm not going to say I wouldn't, but of course I've watched some sci-fi things where someone hacked into it and took over to kill people and stuff. That's worrisome, but I actually think realistically, if we want to be true to it, if we want to be realistic uh, right now, that could things a car could be hacked even if it's not self-driving in order to, I mean, you can just cut wires and kill somebody. So it's not that different. I do think it's quite interesting with AI and how much cars even now before self-driving, how different it is. I heard one of my favorite authors that writes, uh, what is it called? The futuristic, not, not sci-fi per se, but futuristic kind of things. He said, we don't realize how much it's already so much part of our daily lives and our cars are all smart cars, everything they do. And he said, so now I, t I had a problem with my, oh, he said he was annoyed with all the noises the cars make nowadays. They tell you about backing up and this and that, and you're about to hit this. And so he's, he wanted to see if he could get some of it turned off. And he said, the dealership, they, they don't even, it's, it's like the black box, like the mysterious, like they, they were like, we don't know how to do, to, to tap into that, to change it. It's. It's mysterious <laughs> to us. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's it's going to be interesting. But I'm not I'm not against that. I really have really enjoyed what's called the sharing economy. But I don't know if it's so much that anymore of the progress of having things like being able to Uber and that kind of stuff, of course. But also the car share situations. And here we have. I think there's car shares here, but they also have the scooters, the little scooters that you can get on the street with a QR code and an app. And I think that's, it's, it's really handy. And for a lot of modern day situations, especially with people living in cities, it makes a lot of sense. And I think we can, you know, some of that could improve life and hopefully life for the planet. I would never want to get into self-driving car in India because there are a lot of things at play. And, and okay, so as a driver also, People are going crazy about Tesla and, and the Tesla autopilot. I, I don't I don't like it because I don't even agree to the concept of hiring a chauffeur or having a permanent driver for your vehicle, right? Why would I buy a car which is costing me 40 lakh Indian rupees, right? 400,000 Indian rupees I'm paying and I hire somebody else to drive it. What's the point? I look at it from that way, like it's a bad investment. If I've taken such a powerful car, I would drive it myself. But now with self-driving, what will happen is driving for me is, is also a stress buster. Due to COVID, we've been home for like more than two years, almost two years now. And I just can't wait to get out on the main road with my family and just ride. Do nothing. Just ride, get outside the town, grab a cup of tea, eat some street food and come back. That's it. I can't have that feeling in a self-driving car. Although I would love to have it for my wife, but I, I would never get into, you know, a self-driving car because you know what I mean, right? Every driver thinks he is the best driver. And I, I only trust two people in my life. One is a good friend of mine. He's a rally racer. So I know he can't kill me. Second is, you know, yours true. I don't trust anybody else. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> even the machines, the future of self-driving vehicles in India, it's a little bleak because our dynamics are completely different from most of the countries of the world. Like let's talk about America. You have straight roads, never ending straight roads going, getting right into the horizon. It doesn't work that way in India. Indian roads are not straight. Even Indian highways are not straight turns and curves and ups and downs all over the place. So I don't know how a self-driving car will be successful, especially in towns. And then yeah. we've got road bumps. We've got speed breakers. We've got vehicles broken down right in the middle of a road. You know, you leave the road 
so today you coming home from office the road is in impeccable condition tomorrow morning you get on the same road to go to office it's not there they're all it's all broken and in pieces i'm i'm, I'm excited to see what happens with the self driving vehicles in india but as a driver i would not get into one i would not buy one india also has a culture so let's say if i tell my friends that my vehicle is a self driving vehicle they would put it to to an actual test so they would literally tell somebody pay somebody that okay drive your vehicle towards this guy <laughs> they want to check the vehicle they would oh, throw no. a cat in front of the vehicle they would you know pick up a dog and throw it in front of the vehicle <laughs> they would do that <laughs> yeah we we crazy we we are a crazy breed of people <laughs> i love the idea of self driving cars if i could sit in the back and watch netflix and the car drives itself of course i'm going to get in it i'd love that i'd love to watch episodes of anything i'm watching i'd watch it i'd watch it in the back and let the car drive itself so you have to hold the wheel though i think that's too involved i think it's either a self driving car or it's and my logic is humans are a bit rubbish sometimes let's be honest hard to pay attention 100% to the roads all the time and very often i'm sure you've done it when you're driving along and then 10 minutes later you just think Well, I completely zoned out. What did I do for the last ten minutes? The computer doesn't zone out. The computer is designed to follow the road and whatever. Now I know that there's going to be a naught point naught one percent of the time where there's an accident, and because it's a machine, people will say, "Ah, oh, well, if it was a human in control of the car, then it might not have happened." And I totally get that, but. I think that the the incident rates would be so much lower if machines are driving that I think it's a no brainer you know sign me up if I don't have to focus I'm well up for it yeah I think they're really interesting and and I think it's the future in terms of safety so many people are killed every single day on the roads it's it's terrible and if computers can make it safer then I I think we will adopt them and actually I've driven a Tesla it didn't have the crazy self driving but it i was on the freeway and it did that thing where it'll change lanes by itself it'll accelerate to match the car in front or slow down uh, and it's a really eerie feeling that you can let go of the steering wheel so i guess for people like me i'm 39 i guess it's maybe never going to feel natural but i think anyone who's in their teens right now for them that'll just be normal life like of course your car just drives you around why why would you want to drive a car i could just read or play with my phone instead of having to drive and we'll realize too that driving is actually really inconvenient but it takes up so much of our lives and instead if you could go to sleep or talk to your family or just be more like a train where you just get on it and then when you get off you're at your destination and and you don't feel exhausted and it's not dangerous like i think the world will be a better place. I can see it both ways. A self-driving car I think it would be really fun and useful if you're just commuting to work every day or some known easy trip you're just using it for transport. But also I'd really love to still drive my own car when I'm going out into the wilderness or or going off-road or exploring or just having an adventure where it's like I'm not actually on a timeline, I'm just going to drive out here and see where I get to. And I think it'll change so much where it's more like you just sit in the car and look out the windows just like you do on a train or a bus. It's really passive. You're not you're not connected, you're not engaged. And it'll feel I think a bit like you're not making your own decisions about where to go. You get to an intersection, the car just turns left or right based on the GPS instead of like, oh, it looks beautiful that way and it looks boring that way. the car might go the boring way. I'm generally pretty open to new technology, so I could definitely see myself getting in one. I think though that I wouldn't ever become like a whole convert, like oh I only take my self-driving car places because I enjoy driving. So I don't know that I would use that function all the time. I'm assuming that like these cars of the future will have both. You can drive yourself and then at other times you can self-drive. I think I'd like to use a mixture. But it'd be fun to see it. Like I think technology like that is so exciting. So I definitely look forward to it. And I also think it'll be really awesome in some situations. Like say you need to drive somewhere overnight and you want a nap, then you can still be moving, but also sleeping. It's perfect. Mm-hmm.